Hey everybody, Evan here again. Now we're going to take a look at some JavaScript in action. But first we'll start with some HTML and CSS. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do, jump into CSS, select my body element, and give it a background image. Okay, try to keep with me here. And then in Google, I just googled images of puppies, and I found this one, which I like. I'm pretty fond of it. So I'm going to use this background image. To do this, once I find it in Google Images, you can use one of your own if you'd like. I'm going to right click on it and select copy image address. Not copy image, not search Google for image, not save image as, but copy image address. And once you've done that, you just want to make sure you've copied the right thing by pasting it in, a, in your browser and seeing if the image pops up. Now if this takes you to another web page, there's something wrong with that link that you copied and you might want to look for another image. But this one works. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that right in here. And there we go. Alright, now I'm going to keep pushing forward. Try to stick with me. Don't forget to pause the video if you'd like to code along with me. Okay. Or you can check out the full and complete code for this code pen linked in the description of this video below. All right, now that I've got that going, I'm going to go jump into HTML. Okay, now's a good time to pause your video. Make sure your code looks like mine. Make sure you see your text up here on top of your background image. And once you get there, we can keep going. Back in the CSS now, selecting that div with the ID of overlay. All right, beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so this is where we are so far. Yet another good time to take a, a moment, pause your video, and try and get your code to look like mine. Once again, you can use any image URL, any image path you'd like here, right here in place of this green text. I'm using my own, this, this image of puppies that I found. If you want to use a different image entirely, it's an completely up to you. Okay, but now that we have our HTML and our CSS good to go, now I'm going to jump into JavaScript. But before I do that, I'm going to jump back into HTML, find that div tag, that very first line of code that I wrote, and inside that tag I'm going to write on click equals move overlay opening and closing parentheses okay and that'll do it and then one last thing in CSS I'm going to add to this overlay selector transition 0 0.5 seconds ease 0 0.5 s ease all right now we're set up into JavaScript. Try to keep up. Back into HTML. 
inside those parentheses in front of move overlay, I'm going to write event dot target. And inside of these parentheses here in my JS or JavaScript section, EL, short for element. And we're done. So let's see what happens now when I click in my web page. My screen slides up. That overlay slides up and out. Reload and see it again. When I click here, my overlay slides up and out and we see puppies. Okay, let's try this another way now. Let's replace this top colon minus 100 VH in those quotation marks with opacity colon zero. Now let's see what happens. Fades out. Cool. Nice stuff. Let's just see it one more time. Reload my page. Click. And we have puppies. All right, so this is just a very brief introduction to JavaScript, how we have actually made this connection between our HTML and our JavaScript here with a function which causes something to happen when I interact with the page, when I interact with the page. Okay, so that's what JavaScript is about. While HTML lays down all the building blocks, all of the pieces of a website, and while CSS styles them and makes them look the way that we want them to look, changes their color and position maybe, JavaScript makes them respond to user interaction. JavaScript makes buttons work when you click on them. It makes forms work when you type into them and submit your information somewhere. JavaScript makes a site infinitely more complex and so much more fun to work with. Okay, so these are the three languages that you're going to learn in our program here at Codify. And I don't want you <clears throat> to think that you're learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript at the expense of learning other languages. There are so many different languages out there. That's always going to be the case with coding and programming. <clears throat> But HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are the foundational languages of web development, period. They are at the core of it all. Okay, so even these complicated frameworks and other libraries that you may or may not have heard of, all they really do is allow developers to write a shorthand of these three languages. They write code which compiles to these three languages. Okay. Furthermore, I hear a lot of students or people say, well, why learn JavaScript over C or Python or any anything else that's out there? Java. Uh, it's a good question. It's a valid question. JavaScript, however, is built into the browser, basically. Your browser inherently is very capable of reading JavaScript, so it is also very fundamental, very core, and very necessary for web development and front-end development in general. But beyond that, if you learn JavaScript and you learn it well, you will walk away with all of the skills and logic and understanding necessary to master any other what's called object-oriented programming language out there. Okay? So we've just been having a bit of fun building our loaders or this little site which reveals some adorable puppies but hopefully it helped at least show you what this code is going to look like when you start writing it. It's going to show you what you're getting yourself into uh, and while it may feel overwhelming right now I hope that it doesn't because really we haven't written all that much and yet we've already created something that 
might be fun to share, it might be fun to show off, it might be fun to play around with. All we're doing is playing here, but if we took this seriously and really put some serious time and effort into this, think about the possibilities. There are truly no limits to what you can build with code, except the limits of your own imagination. Okay, so I don't expect anybody to walk away from these videos today with a sudden understanding of how this all works, but hopefully it helped shed a little bit of light on the process and, you know, the actual man behind the curtain, so to speak. And I hope it was at least a little bit of fun. Thanks very much for watching and stay tuned.